WGSN DB Going Solo Network welcomes you to award nominated relationship internet radio talk show Going Solo with CC. Host CC Schatz is a speaker, author, blogger, and the leading transitional divorce and dating coach with My Friends Connect and Going Solo Next Step. Now, together, let's join CC. Hello, this is CC with WGSN. DB Going Solo Network, and welcome to the show. This is Going Solo with Cece. And you all know me. We have been around for a while now, but we talk about a various different items going through maybe relationship loss to recovery, transition of dating, relationship. And today we have this fantastic guest with us, and her name is Loray Lorich. And she is a Let's see, her lifelong journey has been one of exploring sexual, spirituality, and relationship that both with our bodies, our health, our connections with the world. She maintains and practices in sacred sexuality coaching, incorporating mindfulness practices, energy and sound healing, and sexuality body works. That's a lot for me to say. <laughs> it's wow, a how did you get into this? How did you get into this type of field of work? Well, it goes back to my 20s. And well, throughout my life, uh, I'll, I'll do it the Campbell Soup condensed version since we don't have a lot of time. As I was growing up, and even as a child in grade school, I was interested in metaphysics. I would go with my girlfriend to the library and we would get books on ESP and psychic ph phenomena and those kinds of things. So I was always interested in metaphysical concepts, like why am I here? What am I supposed to be doing with my life, my purpose, my role, that kind of thing. And so that's always been a foundation in, in who I am. And then my other quest and passion was understanding my own sexuality, which didn't really happen until I started to date in college. And being brought up Catholic, there's a lot of negativity around the body and around sexuality and sexual expression and, and sexual behavior. So I had to make a decision as to, to learn. And I really, once I became active, I wanted to know what to do with someone. And these two passions kind of merged for me when I moved to California back in 89 and it was at a Tantra intensive in 98 that the light bulb went off for me and I really it's like these two passions sexuality and spirituality converged and ever since then I've been taking classes and courses and trainings and going to conferences and understanding the body understanding pleasure helping people and myself my own exploration of freeing my own guilt and shame around my body and sexual expression and I wanted to help people with that as well. So that hence that's ah, why I got into this. It's terrific. Yes. It truly really is. Yeah. You know, it's kind of a subject that we, some people don't like to talk about. Some people talk about it a lot, <laughs> but it's a, uh, it's really so very important, you know, and as we're moving through, especially relationship loss, because there's a lot that we deal with, with that mm -hmm. and we have to, to come about and we have to look at, uh, you know, really our, our, our be whole being and I think um, our sexuality is, is very important to that because a lot of us come from, you know, broken relationships of where you're going through a lot of pain. And then you move through the transition of dating, wanting to connect with someone else, still having, you know, a bit of your past there behind. So you're kind of moving through a lot of, a lot of stuff that's going through. And what I liked about so much about your particular site and everything is it's the uh, reawakening of the divine within. And mm -hmm. I thought that is so good because that is really, I think, as we move through the transition of dating and going into really our, our next life, our next journey to be able to reawaken and explore who you are, your passions, being able to connect with someone else. Mm -hmm. I think it's totally awesome, awesome what you do. I want to clarify for a lot of people, and especially through our religious upbringing, there's a prohibition around sex. However, sexuality is something entirely different. It's this innate energy and force that is used for creativity and manifestation and how we express ourselves to the world. So it has really nothing to do with the biological act of sex. It's this expression 
soul expression, so to speak, of ourselves in the world. And so I think there's a lot of confusion around sex and sexuality. Oh, I think that's great that you you explained that because you're probably so right. And even my mindset a little bit too is is uh, geared towards that. So yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And I do help people in the sexual realm, but I think this bigger piece of what we need to uncover and what needs to be unfolded is this larger nature of ourselves, this, the sexual the sexuality aspect of who we are. Yeah, I I totally agree. And I think as we're moving through into really finding, redefining our lives, finding out who we are, being able to be more in tune with that is so great because it does open up us. It's almost like a flower. You're starting to blossom open, you know, reawakening Mm -hmm. and to your, to yourself, to your creativeness, you know, to really your whole being. And so it's a, it's very important aspect of our our whole, I I think our whole universe as an individual. So these practices from my, well, there's Eastern practices that come from China and from India. Some are from the yogic tradition and Tantra is a subset of yoga of how to raise your sexual energy. So again, it's not about being the, the, the act of sex, but the sexual energy is energy for creativity and manifestation. Mm-hmm. And it's this this seed piece to help us carry through and what motivates us in our life to experience the world in a, in a greater sense. So there's breathing practices, there's ways to connect and build this uh, life force, which is called prana or chi. And I think in the Christian sense, it would be called grace. And there's mm-hmm. this understanding that... Um, this essence of the divine, whether you believe it, you know, you have a certain specific religious conviction or not, but God, grace or presence permeates everything in the universe. So how do we bring that essence of him or her <laughs> into our souls to then affect our physical body, which can affect our mental state, our emotional state, our health and our soul? So those are the things that I'm kind of working holistically when I do coach people rather than just if you would go to a doctor, he's more interested in your physical body or the problem that you have. If you go to a psychiatrist or a therapist, they're interested in what's what's going on psychologically and with your mental state. I'm Mm -hmm. kind of working mind, body, spirit and seeing people as an integrative whole as opposed to separate pieces of, of ourselves. Well, and I think too, as we move forward and we wanted to connect with someone else, we want to to be able to get out there and start dating and such, we, mm-hmm. we need to connect with ourselves. And so our, our mind, body, spirit, our heart, you know, our core, all of that is so very important to us to be able to get more centered. So, and as you said, to be able to write, you know, raise your vibration so that you can attract someone more like-minded to you. So I think it, it's good to be more in tune with, with you and how you do that. Can you tell us a little bit about like some of the steps that if you're interested, let's say we've got listeners out there that are, are seeing that there there's places within them that they can work on and that they can, you know, strive to improve. What kind of elements can you share with them so that they can kind of embrace a little bit more and then maybe possibly contact you to be able to further help themselves to be able to be more in touch with this? Sure. So I think if you're not in a relationship or if you've been in past relationships, I think this is a really good thing to do is to make a list of what you desire in a partner and what you don't want in a partner and go back into your, so if you've been with people what worked? What are the physical characteristics of someone that may be appealing to you? What kinds of, do they need to be financially independent? Do they need to do spiritual and, and psychological work on themselves? You know, what are those pluses? What will you, ex- what do you not want? What will you not accept from somebody? Do you want somebody who smokes? Do you not want somebody who smokes? Do you want somebody who's in recovery? Do you not want somebody who's in recovery? Those are kind of a list that you may want to create for yourself so that you can have a clear idea about who to draw to you. And if you've been in past relationships, you may want to look at the people who you've had in your life and see what those characteristics were 
And if you've had numerous people, are you repeating the same pattern? Oh, that's such a that's such a great bit of information right there. And I think as we're looking back on past relationships, we can pick out the things that are positive, the things that we mm-hmm. did like, because that, I think that does help us to move forward in our lives. But it is so important to also understand the, the negative part of it too a little bit and to see if there is, you were saying, is there, is there a, a pattern within what we're looking for and then to better understand why those patterns. Why those are coming um, up. And then you might want to look at then your family of origin. Are you reproducing your parent? Is that person your mother or is that person your father that's you're bringing back into your life because you haven't really resolved those issues from childhood? So can, oh, and that's that, where therapy might come in, and I don't do therapy, I kind of mm-hmm. do coaching, but those are, might be things to kind of see mm-hmm. looking at the family dynamics. Are you bringing in someone who is abusive? Are you bringing in someone who is degrading? Are you bringing in someone who's supportive? If you are bringing someone positive, that's great, but if you haven't worked on those issues, those self-love issues and those other family of origin issues, we're going to attract probably the same person to play that out because we haven't cleaned up that little mess from the past. Wow. That's very, I think that's very important for people out there to be able to gather because so often you're kind of stuck and you don't realize why you're stuck. And so if you can kind of determine, okay, there is a pattern here and maybe I do need to get some counseling. That would be a great avenue to be able to go to continue on with your healing. So I think you as a coach, you know, it definitely is, are helping people be more aware of what their needs are and, and how to be able to uh, connect with what they need to do. And, you know, it's very important what you're doing. It's, it's a, it's a very healing and it really goes to our, our inner self, our core values and all of that, which is so very vital to us. Mm Mm-hmm. And if people don't want to, if they don't think they need therapy, so to speak, having some kind of mindfulness practice, which is, which allows you to do introspection and reflection to see, you know, to look at yourself. And that's what I believe like meditation and and these mindfulness practices are about. I call them like spiritual psychotherapy because you're calming the mind to go inward, to really see who you are on this deeper level. And once that happens, then you, those little past issues start to come up and then you can try to release them or work through them or use breath to kind of remove them energetically. That's very interesting. So let me ask you, (laughs) <laughs> Sorry. I know. Here and I, I know, yeah. I know. So so let me ask you, if when you're traveling through and you're starting to date and mm-hmm. you I think doing this type of work on yourself as you're continuing to date will definitely open some doors for you because it'll start bringing some some information that you've maybe had buried forward as you're starting to build a relationship with someone else, because what, don't you agree that sometimes our past sometimes catch up with us a little bit. And then we start to think, wow, you know, as we're moving into another relationship, how can we, how can we make that relationship better? I'm not quite sure. Well, like for instance, when you start dating and you meet Mm -hmm. someone and you, and things are going really well, there's still this, this nagging feeling that you have in the back that when they do something that might be familiar to you, you're right away going red flag, red flag. When the red flag, not maybe necessarily on that individual, it's on what you're feeling that happened to you in your past that you haven't resolved. Mm -hmm. Um, So again, we kind of bring people into our life to help us learn things. And this person may be the mirror for something that you need to see and let's say you haven't forgiven your ex for for something you know for whatever and this person comes in and they're kind of repeating the same thing you might want to reflect on well am i open to forgiving people am i in general can i forgive this person who i'm currently dating with and can i then broaden it to forgiving my ex-partner so that's maybe what they're there so it's not that person that you're dating but it's Again, that, that deeper issue, is that, right. am I making some sense? Yeah, no, absolutely. That's exactly what I was thinking. Mm-hmm. Is that it's, it's really it's, it's up to us to heal ourselves. It's not, and, and people do come into our lives 
you know, for sometimes for that reason, I think mm -hmm. that we have a connection for them with them for a particular reason. And maybe it's because, like you said, we need to see that mirror, we need to see, see what it is. And, and so, you know, unfortunately, so as an opportunity for growth, mm -hmm. we brought them in for this reason. And right. rather than repeating the pattern, you can change it. And that's kind of like the first step for change is that you have to you know instead of unconsciously doing something over and over again it's like now you become conscious but you still may be doing it but you're aware and then after the awareness happens well now i can make a choice i can choose y path or i can choose z path i can forgive or i can still do what i'm doing but now you're you have this mindfulness of the behavior and this opportunity for change Oh, very interesting. Very interesting. I tell you what, we're going to take a short break. And when we do, let's talk a little bit more about as we move forward and we're into a relationship, how can we embrace what you're teaching us to be able to open ourselves up even more than what we've done? And I think we've learned a lot just in this very short time. So I so appreciate you being on the show. So like I said, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about all that. But give us your contact information real quick so that we have that. Sure. My name is Lorraine Lorich. I have a wonderful website, which is femininewisdom.com. I also, I'm on Facebook uh, under femininewisdom.com. My other personal website is Lorraine, or the Facebook at lorraineloritch.com, which is a bit more political and personal and that kind of thing. So I've kind of separated my business from who I am. And I can be, I do Skype and phone sessions and I think it would be best to call me to set up appointments and things. And it's 415-505-7230. That's wonderful. So we're going to be right back. We're going to talk a little bit more about as we move through into a relationship, how can we embrace what Lore has here to be able to share with us? And so we'll be right back. You're listening to WGSN DB, Going Solo Network, Singles Talk Radio Channel, where we take a lighthearted and candid approach to discussions on the journey of relationship loss, divorce, parenting, being single, relationships building, dating, and yes, sex. Join our listeners and begin living your best life. This is Cece with Going Solo. You are listening to WGSN-DB Going Solo Network. We want to thank you all for listening to us, and we're coming right on back to the show because we've got a lot to cover in a very short time. We have Lorraine with us, which is she exploring sexuality spiritually and a relationship that both have our bodies, our health, and our connections with the world. And she definitely brings in, I think, a new wave of looking at our lives. And, and even though it's been around for centuries, I know this has, but it's, it's something for us to be able to change our mindset, to be able to go a little bit deeper within ourselves, to be able to, to, like she said before the first part of the show, embrace our minds, our bodies, and our spirits to be able to move forward, to live, a, live our best life. And that's what it's all about. So welcome back to the show. Thank you, Cece. Great having you. Now, let's talk a little bit about moving into a relationship. Okay, we think we've kind of solved you know, some of our problems in the past, mm -hmm. and we want to embark on something new within our lives. And so we want to be more open to not only our spiritual connection, but also to a connection of others. And can you give us any advice as we're moving through how we can keep ourselves open to embrace those around us? Sure. So I think what first comes to mind is this really simple tantric practice. And the teacher called it making love with the world. Oh, interesting. And from this larger perspective, and I'll explain that in a second, you can bring that into the bedroom to make love with your partner. So the, the exercise is really simple. We have five senses. So it's the sense of sight, smell, taste, sound and touch. And he said, every day you tune into each of the five senses for very brief periods of time, 15, 20, 30 seconds max. So what these are is, I look at them as little mini meditations. So if you think about our lives, they're very fast paced. We're inundated with all kinds of information. So what this teaches us is to slow down and 
So let's say you get up in the morning and it's really cold. You rush into the shower and it's like warm water flushing over your body. And it's like, oh, that feels so great. So you just tune into that. That's that feeling. So let's say you're out and you're, you run to Starbucks and they just crush the coffee beans and you walk in and you go, and you smell it. You're becoming really present. All of these things help stop that mind chatter that, that goes on in our brains every day, right? And right. there's so many people that have a very difficult time to turn that off. Mm -hmm. So this is a training. And he said, um, after you do this for a while and you're really comfortable with doing the five senses and they're spaced out, then you add another round and another round. This helps you become more present because what we do is that we're either living in the past or projecting ourselves in the future. And neither of those past or future exist. The only relevancy is the, is the now, is the moment. Wow, that is great advice. Great advice. So how you bring this to the bedroom is that your partner is the person that you're making love to. It's not a kind of like a robotic goal oriented process. You're using all of your senses to tune into the lusciousness of your partner's body. You're going to taste him or taste her. You're going to smell their fragrance or their skin or the pheromones that happen upon arousal. You're going to hear sighs or moans of pleasure escaping their lips, right? You're going to look at their bodies. You're going to see the shadows or the curves, the, the color changes in the body. So yeah, that is, that is a great. very different type of and powerful experience. Mm -hmm. And people do this in a different sense. If there's foodies or you're, you know, gourmet, if you like gourmet food, or if you do wine tasting, you do this in those experiences. So why not bring this into the bedroom? Right? Well, you know, what it brings to me to mind is that you're slowing down. Definitely. You know? So, so like you were saying, so, so fast paced, we do everything so fast paced. And so if we slow down and we do this, and then how many times do you do it during the day? Would you, if you um, like I said, you just do one, each sense once a day, you know, so you're, you're tasting something, let's say early in the morning, then you're seeing something, maybe you're driving home and you see the sunset and you just take about, you know, 15, 20 seconds to look at the, at the sun, at the sky. And then maybe you're hearing a siren going by and it's like, oh, that's piercing my ears. And you're, maybe you grab some food and you burn your tongue. It's like, oh, you know, you, you taste and you feel that. So um, it's just the five senses and space okay. them out and 15, 20, 30 seconds. When you get really good at that, then you add another round of it. So it's not about making these, these things longer. You just are becoming more and more aware. Okay. You know, it's almost like having gratitude, isn't it? You know, we off soft and, I, you know, I suggest to everyone that why don't you do like three things that you're grateful for every day, mm -hmm. start your day with that or, or end your day with that so that you can sleep a little bit better, those kind of things. So it's almost like that because you're taking your five senses and you're kind of being almost like a gratitude towards mm -hmm. that because we have the ability to smell and touch and, uh -huh. and you know, all of this. And so we're taking the time out to be present and I, I and like you said I slow think it's down. a genius correlation so yes yeah, yeah it's wonderful I think and it's then, definitely wonderful and then if you can like you said you embrace your partner in the same way yeah what a compliment you're giving your partner what a what an awesome thing that you're sharing with them mm -hmm. so that's a that's a wonderful tip that you've given us and gosh I think it's a I think it's great and it takes, the, it takes the pressure off performance because many people, when they're in bed, it's, it's usually orgasm focused. So what happens if someone can't, quote unquote, perform for you, if they can't give you that orgasm? And as the bodies change, um, there's hormonal influence, there's maybe illness, there's drug interactions that take place with the libido and physical functioning or sexual functioning. So this appreciation of the body is how you can still derive pleasure and connection to someone. Yes. I think absolutely. that was something that you wanted to talk about as well. Yeah. I, I think that's, I think you're so right with that because I think by slowing it down, 
and going through the five senses and being able to share and connect with your partner like that. It's something that you're actually sharing. It's not so much um, the sexual being, you know, the sexual act itself, like yeah. you said, the orgasm. It's, it's something that you're sharing as a pleasure with each other. And I think you take, like you said, you're taking the focus off of the actual sexual gratification to it, but you're enlightening yourself because you're getting gratification from a, a lot of different aspects. So mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. I can definitely see that this would, would help many out there, would help many. For right. Sure. And, and you're going, you're, you're really engaging with the whole of the person mind again this mind body spirit rather than again many people are functioning sexually on the biology on this programming that you know the instinctual that we're that we come hardwired in with yeah and the pressure uh, the pressure of that well is there is tremendous <laughs> yeah and, and i know it, being older you know myself and in the dating arena i hear it all the time mm -hmm. the pressure that's put on and i hate to say the guys a lot of the guys but the gals are are sensing it too. That type of pressure that you're putting on the performance level when you can control the performance by really being more enlightened and slowing the process down and sharing with each other. I think this step of the five senses mm -hmm. would uh, definitely um, would make that interaction, I think, far better. I gave a talk a couple of years ago to a men's group and I had the word sex written on a little white big whiteboard and then I put a circle around it with that line through it and I said you know sex really turns off a lot of people for various reasons and I won't go into all the reasons but everybody knows and then I took that off and then I said we should change sex into adult intimate play and I prefer to use that term because play is something that is fun play can be very creative it can be very rejuvenating. It can be relaxing. There's no goal. And it's about pleasure. So you can explore, you can discover, as opposed to, again, this process and goal-orientated thing that people do with sex. And in the adult intimate play, there's so many more variables that you can introduce that people can do. It's not about erection. It's not about orgasm. It may not even involve arousal. It can be just, let's have fun. And how do you want to have that kind of fun? It can be through mutual touching. It can be through breathing. It can be through the, some of these tantric exercises of like eye gazing, hearing energy, those kinds of things. Really totally takes the pressure off mm -hmm. of, the, of the building of relationship. Because so often as we are moving through and we're building, we're starting to build a relationship with someone, there's so many aspects of building that relationship, like laughter and just enjoying your time together. And, and it can be the simplest things that you really have a great time with. Mm -hmm. So it's really opening the doors to a lot of, you know, a lot of, great pleasure as you get older and so i think it's it's awesome that you share with this with us today for sure so i think part of that you know when you're with someone is to be able to communicate so that you can develop deeper bonds of intimacy and through intimacy it's how that is created can be through pleasurable activities however you want to define them and communicating with your partner is the key Right. Because you have to be able to do that for them to know what you like, what you don't like, what you want, what your expectations are. And maybe you should lower your expectations and just enjoy a little bit. So uh, that would be kind of cool, too. Well, there's lots of, well, if we'll take this into the bedroom, there's lots of fun things that you can do that don't involve, well, a lot of people think of sex as penetration. But there's lots of other things that can be done to build intimacy that can involve the body that don't involve penetration and as i said sometimes men have issues with performance and so they have premature ejaculation or loss of erection due to health issues or uh, medications they're on some women don't get engorged anymore so they may need help with lubrication and there's things to resolve that but they're not deterrents to being intimate I love the, how you said that. I really do because I, I think that 
we often think because our maybe our performance level is not maybe that that high or what it was when we were younger mm -hmm. sometimes and i have heard this is that they feel that their um, sexual life is over with and it's not 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 by far it's totally not and um you know they have to get out of themselves a little bit and explore and i think talk with someone like you that can really open so many doors for them to be able to create an awareness that there's so much more to life than just what we think it is as we're growing up you know i think as we go into our senior years there's so much more that is awaiting us that we can just just be a little bit more open-minded most certainly and the bodies change so it's like and you re-referenced it earlier that we had a certain sexuality maybe in our 20s and now you're in your 50s 60s or 70s and it's not hormonally driven there may be some illness or something like that or hormonal like i said hormonal shifts hormonal problems so it's really beneficial to who that person is now and to understand how your body operates and i think as youth we had quantity over quality and now that we're in the more mature <laughs> years it's like i want quality i want the the older wine i want the deeper bouquet i want the um this richness and understanding of my partner and who they are as opposed to the quickie thing that we used to have i totally get that i and i've said that not as, as eloquently as you for sure but i have definitely felt that as i'm getting older as i thought you know i really want just a more quality of a relationship you know i want i want the time because so often when we were younger we were raising our children we were zooming around we were doing all kinds of things i want the time with a partner I want to be able to experience life and be able to enjoy things and and so it's like it's just everything and so i think being older is and uh we we just had a chat night uh last night about it sexy over 50. i uh -huh. think being older is is actually awesome i just feel like i'm coming into my element now and i thought my life was pretty great before and now i'm thinking like wow this is really awesome so, well, yeah, there's this wisdom, there's this maturity, there's this experience. And in my work, I have younger men coming to me to learn to understand their bodies, to have an appreciation of how they operate so that they can get good partners and that they can have better relationships. So I think now that there's more baby boomers that are, you know, that that we're that we need to be accepted for our experience and our knowledge and our wisdom rather than like in the tech world it's all about the new millennials and you know they got they know everything about computers but i have a fear that when these when these kids get into their 40s and 50s they're going to have a messed up sex life <laughs> yeah. they don't know how to be intimate everything is fast paced they don't know how to talk to each other they don't know how to be present with each other they haven't learned how to connect with with someone outside of an artificial device yeah that's very true i didn't think It'll about it like interesting. that mm -hmm. yeah and very then, very so thing is going to be like i don't know if i'll be around then but <laughs> <laughs> you have to make put a lot of things in writing so that they can come back and read it <laughs> right so yeah but no it is true and and it, you know it's really all about that connection isn't it the connection mm -hmm. with yourself the connection with your spirit the connection with your partner i mean it's just it's really about that connection and slowing down and and uh, i love your advice on the five senses i think that is awesome mm -hmm. yeah, for sure yeah, definitely. And one of the other pieces that I is when people come to me and I'm working with them is that I teach them breathing techniques. And again, a lot of this has yoga foundations, but thousands of years ago, these mystic and masters understood the power of breath. And if you really think about it, it's the most important thing that we do, right? <laughs> yeah. I think it's a ratio of threes, like three weeks without food, maybe three days, give or take, without water, and possibly three minutes without air, oxygen, before we go into system shutdown, leading to system failure. Mm -hmm. And the breath regulates our 
mind, body, spirit. You know, it can change your mental state. It can change your physiology. It can change your emotions. And our breathing is unconscious. So this conscious breathing that I teach right away is a way to get people to be very present and grounded, get them to de-stress, help them tune in and be more aware. Oh, absolutely. Well, tell us again, how can we get a hold of you? Because I think that those out there listening definitely need to give you a call, make an appointment. I know you had shared with me that you were going to offer our listeners a special that you, you have that you was going to do a discounted a Skype coaching for us. Do you want to share that? Yes. If people want to book uh, three sessions with me, mm-hmm. I will reduce the fee. Normally my fee is between 125 and 150 an hour, but I will give three sessions for hundred dollars an hour if they book the three sessions in advance. That's so great. Quite yeah. a bit of a savings. I'm, my location is in San Francisco, California. So if anybody's traveling here, I can do in-person sessions and I do also body work on people, which I think is really, really important to help clear the body of a lot of holding patterns that we have energetically and physically that go back all the way to like childhood. So again, best way to reach me is by calling 415 415- Five zero five seven two three zero. I have a very old website, and I'm still needing people to help me get it together uh, to build a new one. But it's femininewisdom.com. So there's a lot of information on there, and feminine wisdom on Facebook for some articles that I post about sex and sexuality and spirituality and things that I just find would be beneficial to improve people's lives. And your site, it's Feminine Wisdom, but yes. that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not for men, because I think that if we need to be in tune with our partners, guys out there, and I know I have a lot of guys uh, that listen, I think the best way to be in tune with your partner is is really you know knowing and understanding more about her and about mm-hmm. yourself. And so when we're talking about sexuality, we're talking about spirit, the mind, you know, body, all of that connection, it, it's very, very important for you as a man to, to really reach out and embrace not only your woman, but embrace yourself. And so I think that's very, very important to us. Well, it's funny. Uh, most of my clients are male <laughs> and then it's couples. And the least that I've worked with is women. And in my community, I have, I have friends that are just the opposite. Most of the clients are female and then they work with couples and they won't work with men. So there's kind of a balance there. But just right. because of the name feminine wisdom, I think I'm bringing what, you know, if you really think about it, the, the feminine is what we need in our, in our culture this, these days. It's, it's the receptive. It's going inward. It's the nurturing. It's the compassionate. Whereas politically we have, you know, all of this violence and aggression and too much overthinking and power tripping and things. And so I'm wanting to help bring a balance to both men and women yes. in my work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that they understood that because I think it's so important. I really do. I think it's important for us as women to allow men to be men and Mm -hmm. also for us to be able to embrace partners. So whether you're you're a guy embracing a woman or a woman embracing a man, I think it's very important that we we kind of understand that and allow, you know, the difference of sexes to, uh, to be able to come forward. Well, this is a great show and I enjoyed it so much. Thank you very much. Well, I hope that you guys will listen to knowing that you can live anywhere and she will be able to help you. And, you know, to be able to be more in touch with your mind, body, and spirit. I mean, that is truly the ultimate, not only for your own personal gain, but also for your partner. So I hope that you will take what you've listened today and be able to reach uh, Lorey uh, Lorich. She will contact you and, and help you get through all that you need to get through. She's going to give us a reduced price. So I hope you take advantage of that while she's offering that to us. And um, I think you'll, tru- you'll truly enjoy that for sure. Well, this is Cece with Going Solo. I have to say bye for now. You are listening to wgsn db Going Solo Network. And we'll see you next time around. Bye. bye. Thank you.